Hello. Okay. So, we will talk about uh, cryptanalysis on substitution cipher. We have seen the substitution cipher. It is basically the plain text is uh, plain text hypertext and uh, plain text hypertext or set of alphabets. And the key is basically key space is basically the set of all alphabet we denote this by a. So, this is basically set of all permutation all permutation phi, phi is a permutation permutation on a. So, it is basically a bijective mapping from it uh, a to a. So, then we have seen if we take a permutation and then the encryption is basically this is the key k. So, encryption E of k on x, x is an alphabet is basically phi of x and this is the encryption and decryption is d of. So, if this is y then y is basically phi inverse of y. So, which is basically phi inverse of phi of x which will give us x. Okay. So, this is the substitution cipher and we have say, seen some example on one example on substitution cipher in the early class. So, now the question is how secure it is this cipher is. Now, this is the key space is the set of all permutation from uh, uh, set of all permutation on this set of alphabets. Now, the question is how secure this cipher is. So, we want to do the crypt analysis specially you want to do the frequency analysis on this cipher. So, let us talk about uh, whether we can have a brute force attack or exhaustive search attack on this. So, so let us talk about the key space. So, what is the key space of this cipher of this cipher? Key is the set of all permutation. So, there are uh, factorial 26 permutation. So, this number is basically uh, 4 into 10 to the power 26, which is approximately 2 to the power 88, which is huge, very large number. So, this many permutation are possible. So, if one has to go for the boot force method or searching in a key space, the Oscar, then Oscar has to search try for all possible permutation and there are this many permutation. So, Oscar will choose one permutation and check whether getting a meaningful text or not, then choose another permutation and check whether getting a meaningful text or not. So, this way Oscar has to uh, uh, talk about uh, try for all possible permutation and which is very expensive in the sense that it computationally it is very hard because 2 to the power 88 is large number. Okay, so, so, but this way uh, boot force method is not possible to attack this now, but there is a uh, there is a attack model which is called frequency analysis. This can be mount for this attack because uh, because uh, our English, our text is the English text. We know the plain text and cipher text are basically English. So, in the English text, there is a pattern of the uh, frequency of the alphabets. So, if we uh, analyze the English big text, then we can uh, see this, this phenomena is the E. E is the most frequent letter occurring in 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 English text. So, and this way, so if we know this pattern that E is the most frequent letter, so this is called frequency analysis, then we can have a crypt analysis on this uh, substitution cipher. So, this is uh, suppose we have a long uh, long cipher text which is a uh, long uh, uh, which is outcome of a long English text and the challenge is to decipher it. And, uh, and it is encrypted using mono alphabetic substitution cipher. A mono alphabetic I will 
we will come to that what is the mono alphabetic. In mono alphabetic, a alphabet is mapping to a fixed alphabet. So, if T is mapping to E, then T cannot be mapping to D, this is not possible. So, this is called mono alphabetic. Every alphabet is mapping to a fixed alphabet, it is not uh, mapping to different alphabet. Okay. So, we will we have this phenomena uh, this for English text uh, people have observed that E is the most common letter. So, if you take any English big text and if we just do the frequency count on this of, on, on, of the letter then we can see this picture that uh, we just do the frequency count and if the letter are coming we just put like this like this 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 way we do the frequency count no? how many times a is coming how many times b is coming how many times e is coming like this so it has observed if we take a big text then e is the e is having high frequency then t uh, then t then a so e is having high frequency then t uh, then a like this so this is a observation on the english text so we want to apply this on our uh, crypt analysis of substitution cipher so this how we can apply this so we we have a long cipher text which is basically we know it is coming from a english now if we see now we count the frequency of that cipher text and we count the letter of in that cipher text the letter if you observe j is coming more frequent more uh, j is having more frequency in that cipher text then then we have to see uh, we have to guess that j is basically uh, e was encrypted to j like this and then uh, j is likely to the substitution for e and then p if we see p is the most frequent next most frequent word then we can see that t is t is the next uh, next high frequency letter in the english text then we can say that t is substitute to p so like this we will uh, do this frequency analysis and we will we will just there will be some gap and those gap we need to fill up by our intuition or by some trial and error method. So, we will take an English text. So, let us take this cipher text. This is a uh, cipher text Alice is sending to Bob. Now, what we will do? So, on this cipher text we will just do the frequency count. So, of the letter. So, if you do the frequency count of the letter just a is coming how many times no a is not coming uh, b is coming one time like this c is coming this like this so we observe that z is coming 20 times so that means wherever z is it is it is intuition that z is basically uh, e was substitute to z because e was the e is the most frequent letter in the english alphabet so wherever z is coming we will replace by E. So, that was in the original plain text because E. So, the, if we convert the corresponding plain text, if we see that is a English text. So, in the English text, E is the most frequent letter. Now, here J is we are encountering as most frequent alphabet. So, that means it is quite clear that the E was mapped to J and then. Uh, then who is the most frequent then this is 16 then m so that means uh, t was mapped to m like this so if you do that so this will be so e so this will be the uh, corresponding letter we place e d n like this okay so this is the first part of this first sentence of the cipher text this is the second third fourth so this we just got some of the letters of the plain text and then we will try for together I mean by letters. If we try that also then we can fill up something more and then this way if we continue we can fill up uh, and we will use our intuition to fill up 
the remaining thing. So, if we got some uh, blank, now it is the question of filling the blanks. We know this is the English text, so it should have a meaningful thing. So, that means, finally, once we got this from this uh, frequency analysis, then now we can guess, because this is this is a this should be a meaningful English text. So, this is this should be our. So, our this should be f is missing friend, this should be from Paris. So, this way one can get the plain text. So, this is the uh, frequency attack on frequency analysis on substitution cipher. And this is possible because substitution cipher is a uh, mono alphabetic cipher. Mono alphabetic means each letter is mapping to a unique alphabet, each alphabet is mapping to a unique alphabet. So, uh, yeah, each alphabetic character is mapped to a unique alphabetic character. So, that is why it is possible to do the frequency analysis on this. On the other hand, to prevent this, what we uh, will do? We will talk about what is called polyalphabetic cipher. So, in polyalphabetic cipher, uh, it is basically we use the idea is to use the different monoalphabetic uh, substitution while moving through the plain text. So, we just use different monoalphabetic cipher while we move to the plain text for the encryption purpose, and then it will give us a polyalphabetic in a sense that uh, we will see in a plain text. Uh, so, E is not mapping to a fixed num fixed alphabet in the different position E is sometimes E is mapping to M, E is mapping to N something like that. So, we will come to an example. So, this is called visionary cipher, first example of polyalphabetic cipher we will talk about. Uh, this is visionary cipher. Okay. So, this is the idea is to use the substitution cipher basically uh, 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 SIP cipher while we are moving through the plain text. So, here let m be a this is the size of the window. So, we are blocking the plane we are uh, breaking the plain text into blocks. So, each block size is just m bit uh, m is a uh, m be a integer positive integer. Okay. And then we block the plain text into uh, m, m bits say. So, our plain text is basically uh, z 26 to the power m which is same as the cipher text space which is same as the key space. So, each uh, each key is a uh, this many bits. So, a key is basically k 1, k 2, k n. So, this is basically coming from z 26 to the power m. To the power m means it is a Cartesian product z 26. Okay. So, we will use the substitution cipher while moving through the plain text m bit blocks wise. Okay. So, this is the key. Now, we take a plain text, plain texts are also m bit. So, uh, we take a plain text say k or x, x 1, x 2, x m, this is the plain text, it is also m bit vector. Now, the encryption use on this basically. So, it will also be a m bit because cipher text space is also m bit. So, it is basically b twice. So, x 1 plus k 1 comma x 2 plus k 2 comma x n x m plus k m. Okay. And uh, decryption is basically, so this is say y, this is say y 1, y 2, y m. So, this is y vector. Now, decryption on y vector is basically y 1 minus k 1 comma y 2 minus k 2 
comma dot 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 y m minus k m. Okay, so, this is the description and each of this plus and this subtraction are under mod 26, because we want this guy should be z 26. So, each operation here whether addition or subtraction each operation is under mod 26. Okay, so, this is the uh, this is the uh, uh, visionary cipher. Now, we want to apply on some plain text. So, let us take an example of a plain text. So, yeah, so suppose the plain text is the English text. So, plain text is the English text. And so, we have the correspondence between English text and Z 2. So, that is basically this is Z 2 Z 26 0 1 2 up to 25 and English alphabet. So, this is basically A, this is B. So, this is the correspondence we have used between Z 26 and the set of all alphabets. So, this is the one to one correspondence between uh, uh, English alphabet set with the set Z 26. Okay, now, we have to choose a m. Suppose, m is 6 and suppose our key is key is a cipher. Cipher, cipher means 4 by uh, 6, 6 letter. Now, we can replace this by this 1 to 1 correspondence. So, it will be 2, 8, 15, 7, 4, 17. So, this is the this is our key k 2, 8, 15, 7, 4, 17. 17 is the uh, basically the this under this correspondence it is basically r. Okay. So, now suppose we want to encrypt a plain text uh, this. Uh, this is our plain text say uh, this crypto system is not secure. Suppose this is the plain text. So, what we do? We just convert this English alphabet to digit, I mean the integer, we know the correspondence A is going to 0, B is 1, C is 2, like this. We know this one to one correspondence here. So, this correspondence we will apply and we will get the corresponding. Uh, digit uh, integer bits. So, these are the integer bits we are having. Now, these we have to break it into 6 uh, six bits block, bits means each bits is a, a integer, because our we are moving the through the plain text and we are applying a mono uh, mono alphabetic cipher that is the SIP cipher we are using. So, this is the first block, this is the second block like this. Last block we have only 3, three numbers, uh, 3 digit, 3, uh, three integers so that is fine. So, now uh, we know the key is basically cipher, cipher is basically our key and key is 2, 8, 15 this. So, this we are going to add with this blocks. So, if you do that, so here 2, 8, 15, 7, 4, 17. 2, 8, this is the key. So, on each block we apply this and we get the corresponding ciphertext block. So, this is basically we are adding mod 26. So, this is 17 plus 17 34, 34 mod 26 is basically 8. So, this is the ciphertext. So, this is first block of the ciphertext, second block of the ciphertext. So, finally, we convert this integer again into the alphabet by that one to one correspondence and so, 21 is basically V, 15 is P, 23 is X, 25 is uh, Z like this. Okay. So, this is the cipher text corresponding to this plain text and why this is poly alphabetic? In the poly alphabetic, we know that uh, one, one alphabet can map to the 
different different alphabet. So, if you come here, if we observe this S, S is mapping to Z, this S is mapping to W, this S is mapping to U, this S is mapping to Z, this S is mapping to again Z. So, J and this is Z. So, that means, it is not a fixed number. So, S is not mapping to a fixed alphabet, S is mapping to different different alphabet over here. So, frequency analysis could be difficult in this case and this way it is called poly alphabetic cipher, because uh, it is not giving us a unique correspondence. So, a letter is not going to a fixed letter, it may uh, going to a different different alphabet. Okay. So, now we will take another example of poly alphabetic cipher. So, poly alphabetic cipher is difficult to break by the frequency analysis, because we know this uh, e, 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 know, e we know the most frequency letter, but if E is move, E is going to some different different alphabet. So, then in the cipher text uh, frequency analysis will not give us the proper result like proper frequency that E is, uh, this letter should come from E like this. Okay. Okay, so, next one is what is called uh, transportation cipher. Uh, this is basically also called the uh, permutation cipher also transportation cipher. Uh, okay, so, this is also called uh, I think this is called permutation cipher also. Okay, so, transportation or permutation cipher. So, so far we have seen the substitution method. Now, uh, this is coming from the transportation technique, which is basically the rail French technique. So, what is rail French technique? Suppose, we have a plain text like this meet me after the party, after the party is over, is over. Okay. So, what we do? We suppose we have a 2 by 2 matrix, this is rail French, this is for rail French, this could be 3 by 3, 4 by 4 like this. So, we will put this in this way like this rail track. So, M E E T M E A F T E R T H E P A P A R T Y I S O V E R. Okay. So, we, we have this plain text, this is the plain text. So, this is rail French technique basically. So, what we are doing? We are just uh, re uh, reading this in a column wise. So, this is the aim meet like this, this way we are reading and then this way we are placing in a uh, matrix 2 by 2 matrix and then to get the cipher text what we will do? We will read it by row wise. So, the cipher text will be coming from read it by row, uh, row wise. So, if we read it row wise, this is m e m a t r h p r y s v r e t e f e t e a t i o e. So, this is the cipher text and from here it is quite I mean it is not so obvious to guess what was the plain text. So, this technique is called Rail French, uh, rail French technique. Uh, this is this transportation cipher is coming from this idea. So this could be uh, instead of two by two mat, uh, uh, two by two order, we can have uh, three by three also. Like 
this could be 3 by 3 or 4 by 4 like this. So, if it is 3 by 3, then we have uh, we will put it like this m e e t m e a f t like this and we will read rho wise. So, that technique is called uh, transportation uh, rail French technique and this technique idea we will use for this uh, what is called transportation cipher or the permutation cipher. So, let us formally define this cipher. Okay, so, this is basically uh, uh, we also have a m m we choose. So, this is step 1 m is a positive number positive integer. So, our window size is m and here also similar to visionary cipher here also our p uh, cipher text space is basically uh, j 26 to the power m. Okay. And here our key space is basically set of all permutation from 1 to m to on this set. So, it is basically set of all bijective mapping from 1 to m to itself. So, this is a bijective mapping. So, this is basically set of all permutation. So, how many permutation are there? So, there are m numbers. So, there are uh, basically factorial uh, factorial m permutation. Okay. Now, what is now the encryption? Encryption for encryption we need to choose a key. So, we take a uh, permutation which is say phi from this key space. This is our k key. Now, we define this encryption by this E of so, we need to take a x, x is a plain text, x is coming from x 1, x 2, x m. So, each plain text is a m bit number. So, this is basically we are randomly, we not random, what so I should not use, it is basically a shuffling of the uh, positions. So, E of x is basically x phi of 1 comma x phi of 2 comma x phi of m. So, basically we are uh, this this uh, this numbers we are just linearly permuting. So, may be phi of 1 is 3, phi of 2 may be depending on the phi permutation it could be uh, that way. So, this is the encryption and the decryption is. So, d k of d of phi y now say this is y. So, this is a y 1, this is the cipher text y 1, y 2, y m and say this is the cipher text. So, the decryption will be on this is a y vector cipher text. So, d k of y is basically y phi 1 inverse 1 and y phi 1 inverse of 2 like this y phi 1 in phi inverse of m. Okay. So, basically we are suppling these numbers and then we are applying the uh, we are resuppling it to make it original one I mean the original position we are making back where phi inverse is the inverse of this phi inverse permutation is the inverse permutation of phi. Okay. So, this is the way. So, here we are just taking a m bit uh, m m blocks like this. So, this is our plain text space and this is our set of keys set of all permutation basically. So, we choose a particular key we, we choose a key k and this uh, e k of this is basically uh, the permutation this and d k of this is this and where phi inverse is this. Now, let us take an example. So, suppose m is 6 and 
we choose a permutation which is basically 1 to m it is permute 1 is going to here 3 is coming here 5 is coming here so whatever x5 it will come here who whatever is x x1 it will come here so but it's basically it is a uh, shuffling i mean this linear permutation on the x1 x2 xm so this is one permutation we are choosing and then the corresponding inverse permutation is this now suppose this is our plain text defend the hill top at sunset so this is our plain text so if we have to apply this uh, permutation cipher we have to break it into six six blocks i mean blocks of each six bit six digits so d e f e n d so this way we just break it into six bits so last one if it is six it is okay otherwise so now we have to apply this on this each of this block we have to apply this permutation so this uh, permutation is basically so let us take this example so if you just come back to our permutation our permutation is so 1 2 3 4 5 6 and this is basically 3 5 1 6 4 2 okay so now this is our permutation now if we take this uh, different d e f e n d okay this is one block so now this is x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 now this will go to the this is the plain text block first plain text block so this will go to the x phi 1 x phi 2 x phi 3 x phi 4 x phi 5 x phi 6 now x phi 1 is basically x 3 this is x phi 2 x phi 2 is basically x phi and x phi 3 is basically x 1 x phi 4 is basically x 6 this is x 4 this is x 2 so that means x 3 will come here x 5 will come here x 1 will go there here and x 6 will come here x 4 will go here and x 2 will go there. So, we can just write. So, this is basically f this is n this is uh, f n d this is also d and this is e e. So, this is just a, a linear shuffling on this digit. Okay. So, if we just apply that we are getting this is the first block similarly we apply pi on this we get this similarly this like this. So, finally, this is our cipher text corresponding to that plain text and for decryption we have to use the inverse permutation. So, we take this block and we apply phi inverse. So, we will get different similarly we have to apply from this block we apply phi inverse on each this. So, we get this. Okay. So, this is the uh, this is called permutation cipher or uh, transportation cipher. Thank you.